I want to get into this conversation on quiet luxury, which is not so quiet anymore. And it's not me saying it this time. I let the cats out of the bag and Laura Piatto is no longer quiet luxury. They don't want to be quiet luxury anymore. Can you believe it? So we're going to talk about quiet luxury. We're going to talk about this article. And then I'm going to give you 10 reasons why quiet luxury is dead. It's okay that it's dead. It's okay. Let us embrace this new era of loud luxury or non-quiet luxury, however we want to rephrase it. Now that this trend is dead, Laura Piana says, we want nothing else to do with quiet luxury. Please do not associate us. We are loud luxury. So we are going to get into this article and then I'm going to tell you why we are finally free. Free at last. Thank God thank God we are free at last. If you are into that, then stay tuned. And if you like my nail color, it's Electric Red by Madam Glam. I will link the description below and I will insert a little ad so you can learn a little bit more about Madam Glam, which I love. I want to also say before I get started is you guys, you guys, look at this. Look at this. It says, welcome Bean Beauty. It's from Dee Dee Bean. Before we get into the topic, there's two YouTubers I want y'all to go follow and subscribe because they're for real. Like down to earth, you know, I like that. I like that. Like luxury is not about the things that we have. It's literally for me about your mindset and what's inside, okay? It's what's inside that counts. The sunshine is inside. And I love Dee Dee. I think she's a sweetheart. I did a collaboration with her, Dawn and Candy. I'll put their channels below, so go follow them. And I also, you guys have been watching Jack's Bag Attacks. Her lives, I love your sincerity. She puts it all out there. She's talking about the bags she likes. She's talking about her shopping addiction. She's talking about, you know, problems that she's been going through, real life issues. And I just wanted to say, girl, you are so courageous. Like, way to go for being vulnerable. I love watching you. So you all go, if you want to go find some new handbag besties that I really like following and watching, go see Dee Dee Bean and Jack's Bag Attacks. I really like them. Oh, there's one more thing. I'm going to come back and do a review on my Speedy P9. And um, I have this like bag organizer in there. I'm going to come back and talk about this bag because I think it's great. All right, so Laura Piana, hang on. Let's get into it. So Laura Piana, Laura Piana, you know, it's so funny. I don't even know who they were. <laughs> oh my gosh. Laura Piana, the brand under the conglomerate of LVMH previously ran under the radar so far under the radar that only the who's who knew who they were now is tired of flying under the radar and says no quiet luxury where quiet luxury who don't associate us with quiet luxury we're not quiet luxury we want to be loud luxury we want to continue magnificent growth and we're not banking on quiet luxury being the way to do it can you believe this laura piana the brand that shot like a rocket into the sky because of all of us falling in love with them maybe maybe not maybe like the shoes i understand <laughs> Maybe like the cashmere wear, I think from our friend Politics and Fashion. But maybe, maybe, maybe it was also the fact that, Laura, that you were um, under the radar, <laughs> that you grew so fast. You know, do you see what I'm saying? Maybe it was the fact that you were under the radar that made you even more exclusive and elite in some of the eyes of those who have those perceptions that led to your magnificent growth. Just maybe, is my opinion. This executive, Damien Bertron, says, we're shifting our strategy. We're unlocking uber lux growth potential uber lux growth potential which means we can't fly under the radar anymore if we're going to get access into the pockets of the uber lux wealthy we have to change our strategy and shift directions so what are they doing this ceo says we're going to become more contemporary we want to appeal to a wider clientele launch more leather goods we want to get into a, this 
fast growing category of leather, as well as introduce seasonal themes and a more modern silhouette. This is what this guy is saying. This the CEO existed before Quiet Luxury and will exist afterwards. But there's a lot of things about the brand that's not quiet at all. Now, one year of solid exponential growth and already the CEO thinks like, we've got this on lock. You know, we're coming out of our closet. Literally, we're stepping out of the closet and we're going to make sure that everybody knows we're here. Let me just tell you guys. Um, now, when you hear when you hear these expressions and you think about brands like, I don't know, Gucci, Coach, Louis Vuitton, where have they started to go wrong? In some opinions of those who have been buying the brands for a long time. Wasn't it the contemporary feel, the fast fashion feel, the too often seen repetition of seasonal themes, the modernization of it all? Like, wasn't this where we started, they started to lose us? I swear they started to lose me. Isn't this interesting that this brand does not want to be associated with quiet luxury in the sense that they were? It's crazy to me. The perception of quiet luxury, at least from my perception and others um, from observing TikToks and other videos was, it is the uber lux. It is the uber wealthy. It is the elites that can know who you are and only they know who you are and uh, can afford you. But you know what, you, do you know what Don and I, Don Loves Couture and I saw the other day when we were walking in Neiman, Neiman Marcus? Laura Piana, right there on display next to Gucci, Chanel, and um, who was the other one, Don? Don, who was the other one? Right there was Laura Piano. Now, where's Louis Vuitton? Aren't they not in their own little boutique store? So who is this guy to come out here and start talking about? There's a lot of things that's not quiet at all about, about the brand. If anything, it's you, sir. <laughs> it's you oh my gosh you guys I thought that was just so funny that the brand that represented in so many minds quiet luxury now no longer wants to be associated with quiet luxury it's so crazy to me because I thought that was like the epitome of quiet luxury until it was knocked off this pedestal for me and seeing it in a Neiman Marcus store like give me a break so I want to talk a little bit around why quiet luxury is dead and we can finally celebrate the <laughs> and move on with our lives we can finally move on with our lives and i saw kim kardashian on the cover of gq magazine gq M men magazine wearing a suit when i saw this article come out from laura piana talking about they don't want to be associated with quiet luxury when I saw Neiman Marcus's CEO come out and say, we only want rich people shopping here. We don't want money from anybody else. I was like, isn't all money green? And who are these people, these rich, wealthy people running these corporations who don't want money? This is what I'm talking about. There's no such thing as quiet luxury. There never was. Everything was always an illusion. As soon as the cat was let out of the bag about quiet luxury and we discovered the Bruno Cuccinelli's and the Laura Pianos of the quiet luxury world, it was over. That trend was on a fast train to, to RIP land. Okay. Okay. So listen, lovelies, let me just tell you one thing, one thing right now. If you watch my video <laughs> talking about Louis Vuitton's price increases for plans for 2024, then you know Laura Piano is a part of the LVMH conglomerate, okay? And you know one thing that LVMH cares about, that chairman cares about, which is the bottom line. Laura Piano was on accelerated growth as a result of quiet luxury last year. That was then, this is now. All the CEO cares about is continue the upward trajectory, please by any means necessary, including the direction that this CEO is now willing to go in, which I think is going to be a mistake because it will be at exorbitant prices that brand is already at, that nobody is buying, 
that nobody really knows. Okay, this is not Louis Vuitton. So we will see. That is just my prediction, but we will see. But praise Jesus, quiet luxury is dead and we are free at last and everybody is breaking all chains, including us. So if you are not yet a part of my thriving luxury community, you should subscribe. Definitely join for extra tips perks along the way. Gone are the days when we had no idea what brands were. Thank you, Jesus, okay? Now social media has opened up the way for us to know all about these brands. Do your research and make sure you find a brand that fits your style, fits your aesthetic. Don't just go with the flow because what did I say these brands care about, my loves? Stacking their coins, the transfer of wealth. They want our money. So make sure you're careful about the brands that you want to associate yourself with, but also that they fit your aesthetic, your style, your mystique. All right. We all want that WPE. What is WPE? We all want that wealthy people energy, okay? We want it. And here we should have it. But it doesn't mean you have to go out and actually spend all your money because that's what they're desiring. And when I look at Mark Zuckerberg wearing his $400 Target looking shirt, uh, non-fashion wearing members in succession wearing their $4,000 t-shirt Target looking shirts, it's okay to go to Target and get your $40 basic shirt. It's okay, be free. Do you see? Because at the end of the day, nobody cares and nobody's going to know. So I am freeing you. I am going to break you of your chains. I am breaking, we are breaking all chains here, breaking all chains. It does not matter what you wear because the bottom line is these people want money. They are, they are downright coming out and saying it. It is what is unsaid. And if you can't read between the lines, that's what I'm here for. Okay, so we want WPE. We know what this is. But did you know it takes four generations to build WPE? What am I saying? If you ever really want to be in quiet luxury in your life, it's going to really take four generations. You might say, no, I'm going to do it in one because I'm going to be this internet superstar or this basketball superstar or whatever. Those are the one in the millions. But for regular schmegular everydays like us, it takes four generations in order to secure your wealth. So just start saving now, just start saving now and make sure you pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. So that your generation four years removed from now can live the quiet luxury lifestyle. Just set yourself free. Now, don't come for me, girl. Don't come for me when I tell you these words. And we're paying luxe prices because they are a luxury brand. But here's what actually goes into the cost of our bags. It's actually a lot of marketing. It's a lot of fluff. You know, it's, it's a lot of them sustaining their operational costs. So if you don't want to do that, then don't go out there buying up all of Louis Vuitton. But I also don't recommend you go buy all the contemporary brands either because it's not going to help you save your coins. But buy here and there. Buy the good ones that you really like because it's going to be worth it and it's going to make you happy. So just understand what goes into the cost of these brands because now it's not so quiet. I feel like we all should start knowing, you know, it's like how... People at work never want to talk about their salaries. We're going to talk about these costs. We're going to talk about what goes into bags and we're going to break it all down. So now you know what goes into the cost of a $3,000 bag. It was really just probably costing them $300 to make. It's costing us $3,000 to pay. Are you okay with that? Be okay with that if you're stacking your coins. Don't be okay with that, then don't spend the money. Moving on. Someone said that Louis Vuitton is weeding out people who can't afford the brand. But... That's not really true when you think about the fact that Louis Vuitton is the most counterfeited brand on the world, on the planet. So they're weeding out people who can't authentically afford the real thing, but then people go and buy the fake thing or they'll go and buy a dupe. So I really just think that um, we should we should just change that mindset. Like this is not about weeding out anybody. This is literally at the end of the day, at the bottom line for uh, the Wolf in Cashmere, Mr. Bernard or no, this is about making money and if you have money, regardless of whether you are poor, destitute, middle class, rich, he wants it. Okay. He does not care. So please understand this. This has nothing to do about exclusivity, weeding anything out because they're producing 
fast luxury fashion at a pace to basically make money, at a pace to keep up with the changing de generations, Alpha, Z, anybody on the internet who can make money, who is influenced by celebrities like Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Pharrell Williams, LeBron James, anybody that they can use to make money, they will do. We just need to be able to know that we need to just save our coins, break ourselves of our shopping addiction, or, you know, just declutter, get rid of things that you're not using. Just get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. So moving on to what I just talked a little bit about, Louis Vuitton using celebrities to push their brands. Uh, let's talk about all of the brands using celebrities to influence and push their products okay is that quiet is it quiet i mean someone commented another a youtuber commented is it quiet when the jets are showing up and is a thing and that that is being talked about is it quiet when influencers and social media need to pose on jets sets <laughs> is that quiet like or is it really just, no, that was all an illusion, another illusion of exclusivity. And all of that, I feel like, is just falling away. It's falling apart. It's just, if you pay attention, it cannot sustain itself if you really think about it. There's no such thing as quiet luxury. When everybody is out proud and about carrying the colors of the rainbow with the brand that is most familiar to everybody, like, there's no such thing. And then more brands want to be well known. Laura Piana doesn't even want to stay under the radar anymore. So then it's going to be some other quiet luxury brand that no one's heard of that's at an exorbitant, exorbitant price, like the Row, that people start to flock to. I'm not going there. I have no desire for their designs. I like my Louis Vuitton patterns you know like i'm looking for that i'm looking for the flavor i'm looking for the color i'm looking for laying i'm looking for the pizzazz look at my nails you know i'm looking for the creativity so i'm not looking for pleasing anyone i'm not looking to be part of the elite you know i'm not looking to transfer wealth to mary kate and ashley so you have to be like sort of like know where you stand in this place in this world of whether you want to be a luxury thriver or whether whether you want to pretend to be a luxury thriver. So the next point about quite luxury is Gen Z. Gen Z is not messing around, honey. When we talk about flex culture and also I think this stems from um I can't stand to say this but also rap culture. I can't stand that rappers wear um jewelry and a lot of diamonds on their body like i don't get it because a lot of them later end up broke and it's just like that kind of flex culture is not hustle culture it's flex culture and i think gen z exhibits aspects of flex culture not hustle culture, meaning they're willing to work the side hustles, the side jobs, go out there, do what they have to do in order to stack their coin. I think they're willing to stay at home, work the, the, the coins to go out there and buy things to flex without stacking their coins so that they cannot even like eventually get out on their own. And I think that I think that's that's crazy. So, I mean, Gen Z is the fastest generation of growing millionaires. And by all accounts, they are all about showing off, getting attention. The internet is driving a lot of the need for that. But I also see that it's not really good for us, you guys. Like a lot of people are getting burnt out trying to sort of fulfill the wishes of many. But it's just like our consumeristic society. Like everything people are is to consume. So you just have to pace yourself. You have to be careful. And Gen Z, you know, I hope you guys are putting money aside, not speculatively, but in safe investments, index investments, be like Warren Buffett, be like Mr. Buffett, who doesn't mind his one bedroom, one bathroom home in Nebraska. Mind, who doesn't mind it? Just be like Mr. Buffett and save your money. Don't go buy those mansions that you really can't afford. Don't buy all the bags now in your 20s that you don't need. <laughs> don't go buy all the Birkins that doesn't fit your aesthetic. Like you guys know it doesn't fit your aesthetic. Who are you trying to impress? 
you know, like your grandma. But that's up to you because I'm 40. If I want a Birkin, I can have one, believe me. And it'll fit my aesthetic, okay? Because I'm only heading in that direction. You still have generations upon generations before me. The other side of this is broke boom boomers. Like y'all don't need to flex either. Who cares about keeping up with quiet luxury? When I see stories about boomers not having enough money saved for retirement, I am floored. I am floored. And the younger generation, the older generation, you guys listen to me. Be free of the need to be free. Think about it for boomers is like, you know, they're so they're at a, a point where they, I don't even think boomers like really even care to flex. They are just focused so much on having enough money for retirement. And I don't want that for the younger generation. So that's the reason why I always come back and to say to the younger generation, would you guys please save your money, pay attention to what's happening, a little bit of financial literacy in you. And if you don't have that, ask questions, get a coach, ask some questions. So those are just some of the reasons that I thought that quiet luxury was dead. You know, I just wanted to share those reasons with you. I wanted to share this article with you. I'm going to drop the, the source and leave all the details behind for everybody. If you have any questions, also drop your comments below, leave your comments below. Let's continue this conversation down in the comments. I love having all of you guys engage. If you reach it to this far, please leave some money bags, leave some money bags for everybody so that we're we are leaving the sign behind. We are thriving some money bags and some hearts. Let's, let's leave some hearts and some money bags from a luxury thriver. So, Follow me on TikTok as well as Instagram. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you're not following me there, if you care. Remember to like and share if you care. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.